This is another edition of My Drive on the Prescott Podcast Network, Cast 11. We're covering everything from the commode to the outdoor summit to the first cable TV in the 70s. Looking forward to it. See ya. E. What's up? You're back. We're back. You're back. I was I'm out back. For, I was out for a week. Spring doing break. My thing. It's raining again. Sick of it. They're speaking of rain, you know, the good news is is the Prescott is to perform some controlled release of the two city dams. We got so much water, it's overflowing. This is a this is a good thing. Water right? is a good thing. I mean, this is the first time I've heard that California's not in a drought. They were saying, which they've been in a drought since I was a baby. They'll find a way to screw it up. They'll tax the extra water or (laughs) something like that, right? But uh, yeah, plenty of water. So good news. So this is also going to mean that we're going to probably have a pretty good fire season, right? Because my goats are already looking at the weeds popping up going, oh yeah. Those look delicious. Delicious. Uh, So speaking of fire season, pile burning is planned in the Prescott Basin or Bradshaw. Now, I like these stories, which you can find on signalsaz.com. It looks like fire managers uh, of the Bradshaw Ranger District plan to take advantage of the moisture and uh, burn debris piles in the Prescott Basin. Ignitions are planned to continue through Friday, March 31st. So if you see smoke, there's fire, but not bad fire. Bad fire. Preventative fire, right? So, so prescribed things. pile burns, pile burns, whatever, all good. What else we got going on as we share top events and stories? Speaking of fire, the Naz Wranglers are back. When's opening day? It is this Saturday, the 25th. So nice. it is, um, they're taking on the Duke City Gladiators. For those of you who do not remember, our Naz Wranglers were champs last year. They won it all. They won it all. Second year, win it all. So great job. Um, Saturday, three to six at the Finley Toyota Center. Get your tickets today. It's exciting. Um, and there's a special opening day sponsor. I'm not going to give a spoiler alert, no. but uh, I will say it's it has to do with uh, keeping our champions here. Okay, I, I so don't know how much champions? I want to give away. Mm. It wasn't. It was on signals. Okay. So so keeping uh, our champions here. Well, they. Need a place That's to play, say. so they play over at Finley. Let's Everybody see. Everybody needs a place to live. That's all I'm going to say. Uh-huh. Awesome. So check out the Wranglers. We will all be there to see our champs opening day. What date and time again, E? Saturday, March 25th from 3 to 6. Awesome, possum. And then we have the adult Easter scavenger hunt Saturday, 7 p.m. Who doesn't love a scavenger hunt filled with food, entertainment, a cash bar, nice. and amazing prizes Usher and Easter at Mortimer Farm style at the Adult Easter Scavenger Hunt. Again, Saturday, 7 p.m., Mortimer Farms in the Dewey Humboldt region. Super fun. Raptor 11 has live music and happy hour. Uh, love Dawn over there. They've got their artesian bread that we love. Um, great wine. I was in there the other day. Their new menu is awesome. So this Friday, 5 to 7. Awesome. So segue to some events because people want to know what's going on it's a big events town as we all know uh, been tracking the prescott valley outdoor summit uh they already have over 30 exhibitors signed up really uh first quarter for the september october event that's september 30th through october 1st some of the exhibitors include arizona arizona archery enterprises a lot of people don't know we've got a lot of national brand uh homegrown organizations up here Mm -hmm. arizona archery enterprises is national obviously archery um we also have arizona field optics up here they're going to be at the prescott valley outdoor summit for a second year in a row arizona safekeepers they're awesome a couple others that are really interesting into n2 explore they make uh basically these travel vans custom travel vans they're going to be exhibiting for the first time near zero lightweight outdoor gear this guy won like a cloud funding contest and is creating this super light uh, backpacks and day packs and stuff for hiking. Yeah, sometimes those backpacks are heavier than what you're stuffing in them. They can be. PC right? Enterprises is coming back to the Outdoor Summit for a nice. second year. They make all these cleaning solutions for your UTV, for your boat. Pitched glamping are these really sweet nice. tents for glamping. Not you had me at glamping. glamping. You had Very me at glamping. cool stuff. Um, Prescott e-bikes is coming back for a second year. So Your check faves. out e-bikes. 
Ruger, Ruger Firearms is going to be there. Guns and bikes. Guns and bikes. So your RV country from Flagstaff, RVs, tear-off products. So have you ever seen um, like the indie car races or motorcycle races where dudes just peel off some plexi off their face mask or windscreen oh, yeah, and yeah, makes yeah. it clean again? That's tear-off products. Mike Johnson, nice. his company is going to be at the Prescott Valley Love Outdoor Mike Summit. Jones. Um, just to name a few, Ed, Thunder Mountain Rescue Ranch is going to be hosting the Dog Lounge. Oh, my gosh. Are you bringing any goats? Are you bringing Thor? I'm bringing Thor. Nice. Yeah, I'm bringing Thor. I might bring a, a couple goats. We'll see. you got to bring some goats. So that's the Prescott Valley Outdoor Summit that's taking place September 30th through October 1st. Check it out. It is growing. Going to be a, another big event this year at the Finley Toyota Center and surrounding grounds. Um, we had a little bit of a incident at... Um, the offices this past week Studios, yes. and it sparked my imagination or my oh, no. curiosity in that um, our, we got extra surprises from our commode this past <laughs> week and had to have some emergency plumbing done. Yeah. So do you have any idea who invented the flush toilet? I might know this and do you want me to say it who I think it is? Okay. Okay, so, but if it's not wrong, if it's wrong, it sounds stupid. If it's but, wrong, it's wrong. So we there was a guy named, the um, oh, there you go. There was a guy named something Crapper, is that right? Thomas Crapper. No, but okay. that, that is kind of the, the story behind it. If I, okay. I see if I found it here on um, uh -huh. Live Science, you know, who admitted to the toilet? Did Thomas Crapper actually create your commode? Um, and, and there's just a lot of, just a little potty humor here, but. You really appreciate things when they break, mm -hmm. whether it's your finger, uh, you know, when you hurt your finger, dark. your hand, or even mechanical things like toilets or faucets. My microwave went out. That was um, terrible. It says here the earliest known toilets date back to about 5,000 years ago to ancient Mesopotamia. Um, they were simple uh, pit style potties. Uh, lined with a series of long ceramic tubes that kept the solid contents from leaching into the surrounding soil. Um, nice. But we don't know who really created those. They got a really interesting picture of one. Um, the person who invented, fast forward a few thousand years, was um, a, I believe, a Frenchman. Let's see here. Primitive latrines date yeah, back 5,000 years, including the Romans, which we just talked about. The first modern flushable toilet was described in 1596 by Sir John Harrington, an English courtier, courtier or courtier, and the godson of Queen Elizabeth I. He called the device, he called for a two foot deep oval bowl, waterproof pitch resin and wax fed by water from upstairs cistern. Um, flushing pot required 7.5 gallons of water, which is a lot of water. Um, so these things actually date back 5,000 years ago. Important stuff. And there's, there's those know. urban myths, right? Like that Commodius, uh, um, a Caesar had invented. No, um, wasn't Thomas Crapper. It was, uh, I guess this dude, Harrington. Nice. Well, it's, you realize how important those things are when your toilet is backed up, it shut us down. Like we had to leave the offices and we literally we share space like our neighbors are like army and Marine guys and, and Navy guys. And, um, they were not happy. They have the smell to see army guys going. Ooh. So <laughs> Harrington, as the story goes in, in on history, Harrington described it. Um, but it looks like the patentable, the patented version was in 1775 by a Scottish inventor named Alexander Cummings, uh, was granted the first patent for a flush toilet. His greatest innovation was the S-shaped pipe oh. below the bowl that used water to create a seal. We call that the P-trap, right? Right. Nowadays. So I hate that Preventing sewer thing. gas from entering through the toilet. So we can applaud as we sit comfortably a Scottish inventor. Maybe we should all have some scotch or whiskey or something and we, next time we sit down on our um, for at least patenting it and the the important s curve which i believe under sinks is called that u shape is called the p trap so what are your thoughts on what are those things called where it like the squirt the bidet 
Are you gross. a bidet guy? Yeah, too too much. No, but we had a tenant who put one in, and he was like the superintendent of a construction company. Uh huh. And he put a bidet in. I'm like, and this. I, See, I want just, one, and my husband's like, no, uh, we're not getting a bidet. Like, I, you don't have to use it, but I think I, I think I want a bidet. The um, I was over in Korea for a couple months, and those dudes are really big on the bidets and they're really high tech and they're automated. They pop out yes. when you sit down, they're all uh, motion activated. Is it so, warm water that comes out? Did I, you use one? I, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to use one. <laughs> they have them at, they have them at one of the big box stores and it's like, <coughs> you can get them on Amazon for a couple hundred bucks and it just attaches. I think I want it to be like warm and then like a blow dryer. Whoosh. I'm gonna do one of those. They have the, they have all that stuff. It's like it. a car wash for your bum. For your butt. There, I'm doing it. So I'm what's your? One. Where are we at here? Oh, we're at twelve. We got a couple more minutes. What's uh? Minutes. What's your favorite? What would you say is one of your favorite inventions? Mm, my favorite it's just invention. that makes your life so wonderful. I do love the microwave. Microwave is a good one. Were you even old enough when the microwave came out? Because I came out, it was the Litton Industries microwave at a turn dial, old school, uh, spooling time thing. It was all mechanical, it was not digital. Um, yeah. And I think my family paid like probably like 3000 for it. Mm -hmm. And it was probably, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three feet wide by two feet high. It was pretty big and heavy. It was nice looking, but Litton Industries was one of the, I don't know huh. if they actually invented it, had the patent on it. Um, it's one of the first to come out with the microwave. We were one of the first families on our block to get cable TV. So what was it called? I don't. Do you remember on TV? It's just called on TV. It was an oak box with a black knob. You just turn it on and turn it off. And you had like five cable channels and MTV was one of the first things we watched uh, on that. See, I was 10 years old and we had like Nickelodeon. So that was the first time for you kids who there's probably no kids that can remember this, but we didn't have cartoons. When uh, Saturday morning, 70s. when American Bandstand came on, that was it. Like cartoons were over. For I the watched day. Soul Train because I was Soul. in the RMB. Yep, I like oh, Soul yeah. Train too. So I think it was the seventies on TV. That yep. was the first cable, and again, that MTV was one of the first channels to be on that. So we've MTV. covered MTV cable. We have one. Idealio to share, and then we got a split. What is our Idealio? I can't remember. I hope it's something we can buy in. one, get one free attraction. Oh, it in the game. In the game in yep. Prescott Valley Town Center at, at the, the ranch. ranch. Whoop, whoop. What do you get? You can do any of their games. So, even I think it was everything except for the axe throwing, but you can do um, golf, you can do any of their indoor attractions. It is super fun. Take the kids there. We awesome. had a ton of kids here during spring break. You would have loved it. So from commodes to outdoor summits, we've covered it. Special thanks to uh, research guy and associate producer Cecilia for making it happen. We are out. This has been another episode of My Drive on the Prescott Podcast. Whatever we do what here. Do do? Network. Podcast Network. <laughs> Look at him go. Branding, man. Branding. See ya. Watch out for those rock